The Fallout series has been out for nearly 30 years, with the first one coming out in 1997, 1997, oh no, and the second one less than a full year after in 1998. Throughout that time, Fallout has crafted a long-spanning lore and legacy of gamers, new and old, that all appreciate its retro Americana post-apocalyptic portrayal of an alternate timeline. With the new Fallout series on Amazon Prime, people are coming back to the game or visiting for the first time, and the age-old question comes up, which Fallout is the best? Well, in this video today, I'm going to rank each Fallout game on a tier list as someone who played every single one when they were released. There will, of course, be some personal bias, so consider that when looking at this. And remember, the best game is the one you enjoy the most. Screw what I say or the rest of the internet tells you. If you like Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, you're probably wrong, but who am I to say your tastes are wrong? If this is your first time on my channel, the way I do things is by upfronting the knowledge of my videos so you can decide if it's the right one for you. So with that being said, you can find the entire list in the description and pinned comment. It's a, it's a picture of the whole entire thing we're going to go through today. So go ahead and take a look at that. Also, feel free to simply navigate to the game or games that interest you the most to see where they fall on my list, or at least my explanation to help you decide if it's that or if that is the one that you want to play. The entire series is on like, I don't know, 80% off on nearly every website too. So maybe just buy them all and decide later. But if that's all you wanted to know, please feel free to shut the video down and get back to enjoying your first or maybe repeat adventure in the wasteland before you head out if this is your if this video ended up helping you please don't forget to like comment or subscribe i can't tell you how much those things truly do help out the channel well let's get started here on the ultimate fallout game tier list in 2024 so the way we're going to do this is i'm going to go about this chronologically so we're going to start with fallout 1 and i'm going to end with fallout 76 and that's the last one that came out no yeah yeah it is it is and i'm going to give you kind of a little brief history about that entry into the actual game and I'll show off some gameplay while we kind of go over my opinions and whatnot. So the first one we're going to talk about here is Fallout. Now Fallout is definitely an A tier in my opinion game. It is not the best and it is also an isometric RPG meaning it's a top down old school style of RPG much in the same uh, vein as uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 all made by the same company of course. Now, Fallout 1 comes to us from Interplay. Interplay was a company that was created by Brian Fargo and his bros um, after their dealings with EA. And EA, even back in its hey, in, in, in the olden days, was still a tyrant and, and just corrupting games here and there. Because they originally created a series called Wasteland. And when they wanted to kind of expand Wasteland, EA wouldn't let them because EA owned the actual IP. So Brian Fargo was like, fuck you, I'll make Fallout. And so here we have the entire Fallout series, the first one helmed by Interplay, which eventually becomes really a stronger publisher than they do a developer, but they still do develop games here and there. The majority of the games after Fallout are usually developed by um, Black Isle, which we'll get into when we talk about Fallout 2. But this all starts with Fallout 1, the very first iteration of it all. And you start as a vault dweller out of Vault 13 in around central California. And you're tasked with finding a new water chip as the water chip in your vault has been destroyed or shorted out. And you as the vault dweller have to go into a world, the wasteland, which no one really knows about, right? No one really understands what this is going to be like. And you as the player don't really understand either, right? You're only real interplay into what's going to happen is that you've seen that this world has been bombed out and as you come into it into the actual wasteland of fallout one this is truly what you find this kind of distant americana reference from the 40s 50s and 60s world of tomorrow and this kind of crazy world that you jump into and fallout one has a lot of really awesome mechanics that actually don't follow into the rest of the series one of them being the fact that you can actually type out and talk to any npc outside of your typical prompts you can say hey uh, medicine or type in specific little keywords to try to trigger more dialogue options and it was kind of an interesting little thing that that never really kind of came to fruition but in fallout you get to jump into some real interesting things some very like mad max looking type of post-apocalyptic stuff interplayed again and you use that word like 15 times with some space agey type of tech right we get to see the brotherhood of steel for the first time we get to find out about super mutants we get to find out about the ghouls and this is the series that or this is the one that starts the tradition of talking about the vault as a social experiment we have vault 13 15 and 12 all within this game and this is where you get to find out that hey you know vault 12 was actually used as a way to test what would happen 
uh, if we irradiated a populace, more or less. And everyone in Vault 12 is ghouls, or are ghouls. And you get to go into Junktown, The Hub, Boneyard, all these really characteristic locations that are not very crazy by comparison to the rest of the series. But at the time, they were incredible. And I'm putting Fallout here as an A tier because it has a really good story. It has a very good you know, beginning, middle, and end. You don't feel like there's any real egregious plot holes. It doesn't have an amazing story. And that's really where the Fallout games start to take off from here is, wow, we've created this great world. Let's go crazy here. But it does have some clunky gameplay mechanics. And that, I think, is something that gets shored up in later editions, of course. But it's something that really kind of, when you jump into Fallout 1 for the first time, if you've never played a Fallout, you're going to be like, oh, wow, this is a dated game. And if you have played the Fallout series and you jump back into Fallout 1, you're like, wow, this one didn't last the test of time too well. It does require a lot of patching, either by uh, gameplay, uh, like, fan-made patches or whatnot to really kind of iron out a lot of the little kinks. But by and large, this game is one of my favorite games of all time. And it spawned my love for this entire series and this kind of fascination for this style of, or this portrayal of a future that is post-apocalyptic in this specific um, aesthetic, I guess you could say. But it is it still stands the test of time as one of the best games I've ever played. But our next one is... Coincidentally, the S tier one, and it's Fallout 2. And Fallout 2 is my favorite entry in the series. It came out uh, not even a full year after Fallout 1, and it was created by Black Isle Studios, which is a spinoff that Interplay created to enable them to kind of focus solely on their RPGs. So if you know of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, uh, Fallout 1 and 2, of course, uh, the Icewind Dale series, all of these were created by Black Isle, which is kind of still around, but not really. And Fallout 2 picks up where Fallout 1 left off. You play as the descendant of the Vault Dweller, and you come from a tribe, a tribe in this, in this tribal portion of, of Northern California. Both Fallout 1 and 2 take place in California. And what's really fun about Fallout 2 is you are raised in the beginning of the game on this mythology of who the Vault Dweller was from Fallout 1 and what all he did in Fallout 1. And you follow suit with that in Fallout 2. You can be the kind of... Um, angel of death sweeping through and killing everyone. You can be a slaver in Fallout 2 if you so wish. You can jump into becoming a porn star when you go to New Reno. You can become addicted to drugs, which also give you a ton of benefits. There are a lot of things that you can do in Fallout 2, and it then creates that kind of choose your own adventure for the rest of the series. Fallout 1 is great, but Fallout 1 is a beginning, middle, and end story. Fallout 2 is... I've colored the world how I want to color it, and this is the resulting story from it. And that is extremely true at the end of Fallout 2, because as you complete the game, the narrator will tell you, hey, because of the actions you did at, at this location, it resulted in all of these things happening. And some of those things can really have a large spanning effect. Because you did something at this location, it actually blew up that other location. And it's really, it's really awesome to me. And this is where we get a lot of the bigger players in the Fallout series. This is where we get our introduction to the Enclave in Fallout 2. Uh, we get to talk about more about the, the Brotherhood of Steel and what their relationship is to the Enclave and how the Enclave is different than the Brotherhood of Steel, but somewhat connected because they're both a military branch of the old U.S. government. One is the ones that didn't go underground, the ones that did go underground. It's a lot of crazy crap. But... We get to see the New California Republic, the NCR, which becomes a huge portion of Fallout New Vegas. There's a lot of big things here, and a lot of the locations in Fallout 2 are extremely fun and diverse. Fallout 1 has a series of locations that are all, by and large, very similar copies of each other. Fallout 2, the first two things you go to, you're like, okay, kind of Fallout 1-ish, right? Nope. The next one's like New Reno, and you can just go into gambling and hookers if you want. And that's my point. Fallout 2 cleans up a lot of the bulky game mechanics of Fallout 1. It has a more streamlined UI. There's a lot easier way to navigate the system. Even jumping through stuff like leveling up your skills and choosing feats feels a lot more rewarding in Fallout 2 than it does in Fallout 1. It's why I like Fallout 2 over 1 because it takes that gameplay and makes it just that much better. It's the same reason I like Baldur's Gate 2 way more than Baldur's Gate 1. It's an existing system that's just been improved upon and really made to shine. So if you like isometric RPGs, which is that top-down, old-school style, Fallout 2 is definitely the one to go with. It's my favorite one of the whole series, even from just a gameplay narrative, because like I said, you've created your own. But if you do not like that, 
if you only like the 3D versions of Fallout, ignore the next video I'm going to even talk about and just jump into Fallout 3 is the first one to talk about because you're not going to like any of them if you just hate that style of game. It just That's just the way you like games. But let's now jump into a, the first spinoff, actually, of the Fallout series in Fallout Tactics. Now, Fallout Tactics is weird. It came out in 2001, and it's not even developed or published by Interplay or Black Isle. It is developed by Micro Forte and published by 14 Degrees East. It was a real kind of funky offshoot. And the whole premise of it was, what if we just took the combat system of Fallout and focused on it even harder? And this is what we get with Fallout Tactics. Fallout Tactics was also supposed to be a means to act as a bridging of a gap between Fallout 2 and Fallout 3 because Fallout 3's production was taking a long time. And Fallout 3, the, the, the one that we got, is different than the one that was actually planned by Black Isle. Eventually, unfortunately, Black Isle had to kind of shutter things and, and stop working on it altogether and sell off the IP and so on and so forth. But Fallout Tactics is the kind of closest thing we would have get to the eventuality of a Fallout 3. And Fallout Tactics, it, it's a D on this list, even though I actually really like this game. It's, it's interesting because a lot of people, when they jump into Fallout, they want to join the Brotherhood of Steel or get involved with the Brotherhood of Steel because it's a cool fucking name. And it seems really awesome. Ooh, these, these super cool Techno Knights. Uh, I don't know if they're listening to Techno or not, but whatever. But in Fallout Tactics, you start as an initiate of the Brotherhood of Steel. And you, the main character are human, but you can recruit humans, super mutants, ghouls, death claws, dogs, humanoid robots. You have a whole entire squad that you are doing things with. And the only focus in this game, there's no real story. You jump into a hub, you talk to some other Brotherhood of the Steel members, and then you just keep on going on combat missions over and over and over and over and over. And the combat in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 is just good, you know, it's enjoyable. But really what you enjoy so much about those games is really how the narrative pieces together the combat. You're like, oh man, I'm going to throw fisticuffs with this big dude after I just did this and that because of the story. Fallout Tactics is just another mission. Go do this. Another mission. Go do this, which would become funny if you play the Fallout 4 memes. But I think ultimately Fallout 4 or Fallout Tactics falls flat because it didn't have a strong enough narrative thread to string together each combat point. If there was more of a true like narrative progression in the game rather than just simply, hey, I'm leveling up my characters and I'm just doing combat over and over, I think it would have stood out a little bit better to people. It did not get a great critical acclaim. It only sold something like, I think like 300 or 400,000 units worldwide. So it didn't do very well overall. But it sits here on a D because it didn't really do much to really enhance any portion of the of the series. In fact, it kind of created a funky issue with the uh, the continuum, with the lore, because this is what really kind of goes into talking about the Brotherhood of Steel, how the Brotherhood of Steel um, used dirigibles to get around and how they're originally on the East Coast. It, it really kind of gets muddy here. And Fallout Tactics lore doesn't get picked up again until it's rediscussed faintly in Fallout 4 and eventually kind of retconned but fixed. It's a very funky game that really doesn't feel like a true Fallout entry. Speaking of another really bad spinoff, we have Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. Not to be confused with Fallout Tactics Brotherhood of Steel. You know, because that's not a confusing name mechanic at all. But this came out three years after Fallout Tactics Brotherhood of Steel. And if you're keeping track here, we have a launch in 1997, 1998, 2001, 2004. And then when we get into Fallout 3, it's going to be Fallout. It's going to be 2008. But... Brotherhood of Steel is trying to cash in on Interplay's success with Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and 2, which was their foray into jumping into both an action RPG of the Forgotten Realms D&D universe and consoles. That was the big focus here for Interplay was to try to jump into a market they previously could not tap into sufficiently. And Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and 2 are still some of my favorite action RPGs. They're amazing games. Brotherhood of Steel, not it. Because it just did not go with the rest of the universe. You, It's a very linear game. It's barely even an actual RPG. And you choose one of, I think it's like six characters. And that's it. You choose those characters. You level those characters up. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's six, six characters. Um, and... 
you, the, the sixth character you unlock is the Vault Dweller. The lore has been completely thrown out. It's considered non-canon entirely. And the elements that make it an action RPG, comparing it to Dark Alliance 2, are not that good. It just did not make that full translation in the way that Dark Alliance did. And it ended up being a pretty, it's not even a flop because by the time it came out, it was actually scoring decent enough sevens or so on most, um, most rating websites. It just did not have that kind of teeth that the other followed games, even followed tactics had where they felt like you, okay, this is, seems like some sort of a step in some direction towards, um, uh, the series. And, I think even for Todd Howard, he completely retconned Brotherhood of Steel and retconned originally Fallout Tactics, but brought it back in for Fallout 4 for just little bits of information here. But by and large, don't touch this game. Completely skip it. It's not worth your time because it's not even the same style of game. I mean, albeit Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4 are not even the same style of game of Fallout 1 and 2, but still, at least they kind of fall in the, the predecessor's footsteps. So jumping into our next selection, we have Fallout 3. We've jumped in now to 2008. Todd Howard has taken the wheel. We're in the Bethesda land. Fallout is about to be re-envisioned as a RPG shooter in a 3D realm. And I'm putting this as a C tier because I just don't think the game's that good. I think it's a really solid game for when it came out, much like I think that Skyrim was a great game when it came out. But I think that it pales in comparison to its... Um, following two titles, Fallout 4 and New Vegas, because they just did the they did a better service to either the story, a better service to the lore of the whole world, or it was overall a more approachable and and, and fun and interesting game. Fallout 3 when it first came out was was amazing. It was intoxicating to sink into Washington DC, which was a real interesting different location entirely than the rest of the Fallout games. I think Fallout Tactics doesn't take place in um California, but it didn't matter because you're not really navigating through much of it. But Fallout 3 takes place in a whole new porch, the Capital Wasteland. We get to see the Capitol building in ruins, all these different things, and it is it's amazing. And you have Liam Neeson as, as some of the, the voice acting credits in here. So Fallout 3 is a is a great first step into the 3D realm for Fallout. But you're gonna find if you jump into the game that it doesn't really stand the test of time too well. It feels very clunky. There's not as the UI is really difficult to manage when it comes to jumping into Fallout 4 or Fallout New Vegas. And ultimately, too, it's Kind of a little one-dimensional in the sense that you're not going into a lot of really crazy fun stuff things feel very flat especially like i said once you compare it to the latter two games in the in the series which just have so much more life in each and every one of the locations now fallout 3 does introduce the vat system in a really big way and now depending on where you stand on this you either hate it or you love it if you're an old school uh fallout fan I personally am not a huge fan of it, but I use it every goddamn time I play because it's like kind of the only way you can play. Playing Fallout 3 as a run and gun is not necessarily as fun because it's just difficult. You have to use the VAT system almost all the time. Now, Fallout 1 and 2 had the VAT system, but you almost never had to use it because it was a turn-based isometric RPG. You could just simply just shoot with your gun. You didn't have to waste the action points to shoot with uh, aiming down the sight, basically. So Fallout 3 stands as the best step forward, right? This is the thing that brings us into the new era and shows us what a 3D Fallout could look like. And it blends a lot of really great elements of the stories and, and things of Fallout 1 and 2 while bringing that kind of Bethesda touch, that open world RPG touch into the game. I just don't think now, in retrospect, it's as awesome as the other ones. Which brings me to my next point. Fallout New Vegas is the best of the 3D Fallout RPGs. And I, I think that most people would actually put this as S tier. I personally like the isometric portions of the Fallout universe and the Fallout games. So that's why Fallout 2 is up there for me. But most people will tell you Fallout New Vegas is the best one. And the reason behind that is that Fallout New Vegas, actually, it's, it's not developed by Bethesda. It's developed by Obsidian, which we all know always does things way better than everyone else, than, than the original person who held them. But... Fallout New Vegas had a lot of the original team from Black Isle. And the second you jump into Fallout New Vegas versus Fallout 3, you just, you feel different. <clears throat> Fallout 3 starts within a vault. Fallout New Vegas starts 
you wake up in a poorly dug grave and you kind of have to figure out what the hell went on. You have a little bit of dementia, which is kind of a trope when it comes to video games, right? You have a little bit of amnesia. <clears throat> but what's so great about them is you get such a good jump into the, the 3D realm with Fallout New Vegas if you've never played any of the 3D ones, but you now get crafting and weapon customization. You get a whole reputation system. You get really fun and interesting companions. You have a hardcore mode where you have to really focus on um, feeding yourself and drinking water. All these really fun things that you can tell the old school Black Isle people were like, this is what we wanted to do in our Fallout 3 that we couldn't do, that we're going to do in Fallout New Vegas. And even the story itself, it it's got that same kind of gray that Fallout 2 has. Fallout 3 has like a, oh, a good, a good hero ending. Fallout New Vegas has like a, I guess you did the right thing ending. Maybe, who knows? It, it you know, ends justify the means type of ending. There's a lot of really different ways you can follow it. And even over that, <clears throat> Fallout 3 is kind of linear in that you're going to do the, the story as you do the story. Fallout New Vegas is, do you want to join these guys or do you want to join those guys? Because there's two major factions in Fallout 2. And they kind of are the large driving point between this whole entire thing. And, and it's really cool. They're very characteristic. This is where we have NCR from Fallout 2 comes right back in the New California Republic. And then we've got the... Um, I can't even think, I can't even remember the name of them, but C oh, Caesar's Legion, I'm sorry, that's the name of it for Fallout New, New Vegas, which is essentially raiders who look like Roman, like, like the Roman army. It's really, really, really cool and characteristic. And you have all these really fun, interesting moments in Fallout New Vegas because you're going through Las fucking Vegas. Like it's a really interesting location to jump through, much in the same way that the Capital Wasteland is very interesting too, but this feels more characteristic as well. You have very fun interplays with really interesting characters like Mr. House, who pretty much controls is, is an AI that controls a lot of old Las Vegas. It's it's just very interesting game and it brings a lot of really fun, very gamey elements of the original Fallout while not just feeling like a simple shooter game. Fallout 3 felt like I was shooting a lot of the time and I was killing bullet sponges. Fallout New Vegas felt like it didn't matter if I was killing things. If I don't do this thing properly in the story, it can't work. And that's what I liked about Fallout 2 is combat had a measure to it. It felt like it was weighted towards a narrative direction that Fallout New Vegas crushes. It is easily my favorite of all of the 3D RPGs. Now, chronologically, Fallout Shelter comes out right before Fallout 4. It was kind of released as a app companion that would help you and give you some cool things from Fallout, and they would have a little, uh, I'm not going to say the word interplay, but they would have a little relationship between the two. And it's, it's still, honestly, one of the best Fallout things ever. It's not really a, there's no real big crazy story. You're just basically building a big fallout shelter, a big vault of your own. And you have people that come into it and, and they, and you assign them different tasks. You can put it on your console. You can put it on your PC. You can put it on your phone. It originally only came out on, on phone. They actually only came out on phone and, and like maybe PlayStation and Xbox, but it was, it, it is still to this day, one of the best ways to just simply idly play fallout and have a great time is an A tier because it's a, it's a originally a mobile game. So it has a clunky UI that is better managed on, on, uh, on mouse and keyboard, of course, but it is honestly one of the best ways to play this game. I, I cannot give you higher praise to fallout shelter. It's so fun. I think there's been a huge drove of people who have re downloaded fallout shelter because of the series and because it's weighted. Hey, you know what? I don't have the time to sink back into the whole series. This gives me a little taste of the series without having to play a bunch of hours into it. And I can do it during a lunch break while I'm pooping on the company's time, whatever it is. But I strongly recommend you try out Fallout Shelter if you try out nothing else on this list. Some people are not going to like this placement, but Fallout 4 is a B tier for me. I think Fallout 4 is the best technologically of the, of the 3D RPGs. You know, it's like it's the most advanced... Um, uh, graphically but fallout 4 now goes back under bethesda's umbrella and to me fallout 4 i played i played the shit out of fallout 4 i loved it it was a great game it was really enjoyable but it lacked the character of new vegas i didn't feel a strong inspiration to my character doing any one specific thing outside of like well here's what the brotherhood of steel is doing look these death claws they've got brain helmets like okay 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 cool and this also depends on who you are as a gamer 
Will you get lost for hours building buildings in a game that allows you to have a sandbox building experience? Yes, then Fallout 4 is an S tier for you because that's the biggest difference between Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 is the focus on producing your own bases and building. And to me, those are all great things. But what I didn't like about it is that when I jump into a Fallout game or really a Bethesda game in general, uh, yeah, the story is whatever. I'm just going to play the game how I want to play it. But Fallout 4 you don't really discover you can start building your own buildings until a certain point in the story. And if you've not gotten to that point, you're not going to get all the materials to make those buildings. So you might have explored, like, let's just say 20% of the map. And then you finally get to that point in the story, like, oh, crap, I now have to go back to all those places because I didn't understand why I could loot a car battery. Now you're like, oh, I kind of need that car battery because I want to make a generator. And that's another thing I don't like about Fallout 4. Fallout 4 takes what Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas did and really makes it awesome with the crafting and the customization, allowing you to spray paint your, your power suit, your power armor, and all these different power armors. That's one of my favorite parts about Fallout 4. But I spend so much time playing Fallout 4 looking at the ground. Where's duct tape? Is that Wonder Glue? Okay, I need that. Don't mind my... my mouse that just disconnected from my computer. I, I'm trying to find all these things in Fallout 4 to make these things for my base, and it, it puts blinders on my gameplay versus Fallout New Vegas, which doesn't have those things. I can just play. Or Fallout 3, I can just play. Fallout 4 has the same problems I had too with Fallout 3. It's pretty much a shooter that has RPG elements. Like, the narrative doesn't really ultimately drive my combat like it did for New Vegas. And yes, no, it does, and that Fallout 4 has a strong narrative that you will follow and you will do things and have certain fights and shootouts trying to do certain stuff. But I didn't feel as attached to the story, my companions, or even the factions that you can kind of choose in Fallout 4 as I did in New Vegas. It's still a great game. And especially if you like sandbox production, it's or sandbox uh, building production, it should be the top tier for you. But Fallout 4 stands as a B tier for me. And the last game on this entry until Fallout 5 comes out is Fallout 76. And I'm going to do something wild here. When this game came out, let's do a tale of the tape. When this game came out in 2018, I think it was, or 2000, uh, 2018, yeah, dead on. Um, when this game came out in 2018, this thing was, was a D tier, for sure. But it got better. It got real good. And now it's really damn good. And I'm putting it at B tier, but I really feel like it depends on how you like to play video games and how you like to approach these. If you like the open world sandbox production of things, it's easily an A tier. I, I don't think it's an S because there's no, there, there is a narrative to this game, but it is not that strong, strong narrative that we get with Fallout 3, 4, New Vegas, 1 and 2, so on and so forth. It's there. It's fun. It's light. But it's not really meant to be the largest driving force. The big thing with this game is that it is most certainly a social fallout. You can play the fallout experience. You can go and delve into an old vault. You can go and jump into that rickety ass mine. You can do whatever you want and you can explore. And you go, oh, I just found different pieces to a power armor. I'm going to go assemble my own power armor back in my base that I've built up from scratch. And I'm going to jump on with my bros and we're going to go launch a nuke and destroy something. And then we're going to cause a huge like pyroclastic wasteland mutant dragon fight. There's a lot of really awesome things in Fallout 76. And Fallout 76 original iteration was supposed to kind of like, oh, the PCs or the NPCs. It had a really interesting concept that just did not land in that first year. But now Fallout 76 is probably one of the best Fallouts right now. If you solely just want to jump into a game and play the Fallout experience without focusing too heavy on the story. I would tell you, honestly, if you've played all the Fallout games and you've watched the show and you're really excited and you want to jump back in, just play Fallout 76 because you're going to get all the same stuff that you've gotten from probably the last three Fallouts that you remember the most fondly. And you're going to be able to do it at your own pace, your own time. You jump in, maybe you see some dude who's got a really awesome house and he's got a bunch of cool shit and he tells you about how to get it or do something like that. There's a fun social aspect to it. You're sharing this love of Fallout with someone else. Or maybe, you know, you've got two or three other friends who also are jumping into Fallout with you that saw the show and they love it. You guys can make a private server and just play together. So there's a lot of fun to be had with Fallout 76. And I think it's one of the ones that 
was originally a black sheep and fell into the same D and Brotherhood of Steel category as before, but has truly risen to prominence, especially in the last couple of years. I, the first time I played Fallout 76 was in like fall 2021 into spring of 2022, and it was a really fun experience. And I could jump into doing those really cool public raids where you just jump in with people and go kill something really quick or just go and play stuff on my own. And they're constantly adding stuff to the game, so it's really fun. I will warn you, though, if you do jump into Fallout 76, it is a free-to-play online game, but like all free-to-play online games, they're heavily monetized. And if you don't do the, the monthly subscription, you're limited on your storage, which is kind of a huge part of the game is storing tons and tons and tons of items. So just be no, be, just be aware of that. It is like $12.99 a month, so it's super cheap to jump in, but then they just hook, line, and sink or yeah with the, with the monthly subscriptions. But Fallout 76 is probably the best experience you could jump into now if you've played all the Fallout games and you all and you shelved the 76 because of a really bad launch.